Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. And we sure are grateful for them. It's D-Day in this case around here. That stands for Donnybrook Day. Of course, it's also the 75th anniversary of the invasion by the Allies on the French beaches, a day we all want to acknowledge, and perhaps we will before this program is over. Let's meet the panelists who are surrounding our big green table for this edition. She's Wendy Weiss from the Big 550 KTRS and the media veteran herself. Mr. Bill McClellan from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch and STLToday.com. From the Big 550 and the Rear Front Times, Ray Hartman. And from 590, 97.1, stlouismag.com <laughs> and uh, the St. Louis American. And He's I, Alvin Reed. And I cleaned my gutters today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. And that's all the time we have. Good night, everybody. Okay. Hey, Wendy, I want to ask you, uh, Stanley Cup final, St. Louis uh, with the national attention this past week and some great acts performing in downtown St. Louis and the St. Louis Blues performing really well in that game four. Everyone's pumped. Uh, we did have some hiccups along the way. The uh, steam that's used to generate hot water in downtown hotels failed, so there were a lot of out-of-town visitors without hot water. Overall, you think we acquitted ourselves pretty well in the national eye? I think that people understand that this is the Midwest and that we sit at the confluence of three great rivers and that in the spring and summer and sometimes the fall and the winter, <laughs> we have some flooding issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't think that any of our guests, whether they were from Chicago for the Chicago for the Cards Cub Series or whether they were from Boston, uh, they have their own climatological issues. I don't think anybody is going to think anything of it. The car street, the, the pump station at car street just was, was overwhelmed. I'm not sure how it all works, but they tried to get boilers in from all over the place as quickly as they could. So I like the idea like that these out of towners <laughs> came in and, and in the hotel said, you want what? <laughs> Hot water? Uh, Hot water? Go on extra. down to the river. Wash up. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, mean, I thought it was great. Uh, I, uh, you know, I'm thinking like, oh, from all over the country, we don't have any water. I would say hotels like, hey, you knew that river was rising. You might have thought that, hey, what could go wrong? So maybe a little bit more forethought could have been used. Um, but I was in Atlanta, and those of us that were in Atlanta for the Super Bowl, uh, the first Super Bowl with the ice. Rams, ice. And we, we, we had hot water, <laughs> but the housekeeping could get, get there. there. Right. Yeah. Housekeeping could be there. She said, listen, unless it's emergency, you're the same tiles and sheets and all that. And um, But they slipped a little thing under our door that we got like two nights. Mm. Any, I think I was in a Marriott Marquis. Good. Any. You know, and so hopefully St. Louis did the I, same thing. I hate thing. to well, say I, it, but I, we've I, almost become like flood tourism. People, do you see how many I, people I, we, I yeah. stop here to take yeah. their photos? I want to see. It, no, I was going to say one. I, my recollection of that being at the Super Bowl was a guy my size getting killed in Buckhead that day. Yeah. <laughs> the party afterwards. But but um, the, um, um, I, I think when it comes to, well, first of all, <laughs> I, I do think MSD picked, a, picked an interesting time to go for a tax increase. Right. But, um, as far as the image thing, we first we pay too much attention to it, I think. But also, it's been great for St. Louis in the sense that when when there's you're in the hockey, the, the Stanley Cup Finals, the focus is on what great hockey fans you have mm -hmm. and how excited the city is, and for it's sure. a feel-good story. And that's the only story that. Although comes I wasn't, I don't, I don't want to let MSG okay. off the hook. I think they got a real problem. I mean, because I think rivers are going to be backing up, and we shouldn't be losing steam. To the hotels right. in downtown Agreed. St. Louis. And real so. quick, I will say this, that you woke up, if you were in from out of town, you woke up to no hot water, and a man married his wife in Las Vegas in like two weeks earlier, and she ended up falling off the parking garage and oh, yeah. dying. And I, I well, just Well, there was like, that. And yeah. like, wow, Well, there man. is that, yeah. But, is you that? know, but okay. all in all, we've done a good job. Alvin, I want to ask you about a report that first was reported by a service called Plain View in Philadelphia and they did a computer scan of postings of police officers all around the country in many cities six or seven anyway including St. Louis and they found some really ugly postings by members of the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department about 45 police officers 
had taken part, and um, half of them are no longer with the force for whatever reason. About six of them, though, really posted the majority of the posts that were disparaging to blacks and to Muslims. And the city leader said they're all employees in the police department and beyond working for the city are going to go through sensitivity training. I'm thinking, why put all the you know, people who are straight and narrow, why are you putting them through sensitivity training? Just get rid of the bad apples. What do you think? Well, first of all, you know, I kind of feel like Claude Rains. There, there's gambling in Casablanca. I'm shocked. You know, <laughs> you, you've got some racist police officers. I think pretty much everybody would acknowledge that in the first place. And the city's response, rather than taking a hard line, is like it won't be tolerated. Let's take, um, you know, sensitivity training. Waste of money. Colossal waste of money. I agree. Just draw a line and say, like, any more of this nonsense, you'll lose your job. Now, we can argue about First Amendment rights and all that later, but just let it be known, I'm the mayor or I'm Jimmy Edwards, you know, I'm, I'm not putting up with it. It'll cost you your job. And until you, mm. it, it's going to continue. And I don't even hear right. an argument. And I, wait a minute, why is First Amendment part of this? Okay, in other words, the First Amendment guarantees you the right of free speech that the government's not going to put you uh, in jail. We've been on this show 32 years. If I went on a certain kind of rant with a certain kind of uh, language, which I don't intend to do, but if I, I could imagine just dropping all kinds of bombs, I won't be on this show next week. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. And, and it's okay because you don't have the right. I think some of these guys deserve to be fired. Flat out, because they don't, they aren't fit to serve and protect in our community. It's not about free. The First Amendment doesn't protect you from economic consequence. Now, do I think any of them should be locked up? Of course not. I'll fight to the death for the right not to be. But the First Amendment has nothing to do right, with this. You know, but I, I think if you took any large organization of a few thousand people and examine their social media, you'd find a lot of haters. I mean, you, you, you sure. it, we, we have an industry, talk radio, uh, the cable news networks, making people angry. And, and, you know, I don't think it's just the police departments. I think any large organization, you'd have people retweeting hateful stuff and tweeting well, it or I'm, whatever they do. I'm not taking anything away from Rush Limbaugh, obviously, but I think that he even comes in second or even third now to social media and, and what is happening on social media and in real time. But I do agree with Charlie. I mean, there is no reason in the world to punish the right. people who have not said anything offensive. And I think it is becoming a cottage industry and we have to watch out for that too, especially a city like St. Louis that is, should be watching its bottom line. Uh, there are a lot of people who are who are capitalizing off of no, bad I, behavior. I, I don't blame Jimmy Edwards for one. I mean, first of all, I well, agree with no, I, no, no, I'm, I'm I just think saying. It's, I, well, he's, he's the one that doing sensitivity training. If they want to do it, I think it is a waste well, of money. Well, I blame but, is but, too strong but word, my but point here. is, no, I blame him for Is My point is, there are a few okay. of these, just a few, that deserve action on these I individuals agree. and act on them. Okay, Bill, let me ask you this. How about action on Joel Courier, your colleague at the St. Louis Post-Dispatch? Judge Nellie Roboto is finding him, him in contempt because she had kicked at the press out of her courtroom in an important hearing. He ended up putting his hand on a, like a cup on the door, listened to the legal proceedings, and he started tweeting about them. And now she wants him to write letters of apology to various parties and to attend a kind of sensitivity or educational seminar of his own. What do you think about that? Well, I thought the whole thing was, was wrong on the judge's part. I thought that she should not have closed the hearing. I thought that was a tortured reading of the law myself because it, you, you could, it said, you, well, I won't go into it, but I thought she, she, that was a mistake. And I think that she and Christine Bertelson, a former colleague who's now the uh, strategic director of communications for the court system, it, were just angry and spiteful because Joel did this tweet that I'm, I'm listening at the door and charged them with this uh, contempt to court. I, I thought it was wrong. And, this is what reporters do. If a reporter is told to go cover an important hearing and there's a compelling public interest to know what's going on with the Antonio Taylor case, he sh shot the policeman from Baldwin and the, left the policeman paralyzed, and people want to know what's going on. But aren't mental health proceedings supposed to be off the record and uh, away from the press? Well, well yes. Well, I, I brought, and I don't mean to uh, go all legal on you guys, 
But I did bring the part of the law that she cited. It's going to be quite was, a reading. The result of any examinations made pursuant to this section shall not be a public record or open to the public. Well, that's e everything then. I mean, anything in mental competency is pursuant to the exams. So it would be that we would never hear anything more about Antonio You're, Taylor and or Page, anybody. Sam Page should be charged with contempt, too, because he cited what was on that subpoena or whatever for those folks in St. Louis County. He said he did it by memory, but that was not for public consumption. He put it out there. Reporters say all the time, I've got a source that says this is going on in the judge's chamber. And they don't cease a trial and try to round up everybody in charge with contempt. There's something more to this. It's just some hate. I uh, don't think so. I think Judge Roboto was doing her job. I think that is the the letter of the law. I'm surprised about Christine Bertelson. That has to be a very awkward situation for her. And I think I think Courier took his medicine like a good reporter and promised he wouldn't do it again. So I don't you don't think, think should anything should ever be reported about anything involving incompetency hearings? No, but I think that she was fo obviously, but she was following the letter of the law that you read. Okay, that, well, we're wait, gonna wait, take wait, a break wait, here. Wait, we're gonna so break here come and come back with more because this is the time we want to ask you to join us in September for Donnie Bash. Here are the details. And we are taking just a quick break from Donnybrook. We have plenty more to come. Hi, I'm Marianne Carson here in the Nine Network studio, and we're inviting you to become part of the Nine Network, not only that, but also to be part of the audience at the next Donny Bash, which is coming up in September. It's a Thursday evening, September 26th, and the doors open at 5.30. It's a wonderful evening. If you've been, you know what I'm talking about, but if you have never been to Donny Bash, you don't know what you're missing. There are several ways that you can be there as a Nine Network member, because tickets are only available to Nine Network members. First of all, tickets are $5 each, so at $5 sustaining, that's $5 a month as a sustaining member for a ticket to Donnie Bash, or if you would rather have the mug, that's your choice at $5 as a sustaining member. But we think that the best deal around is to become a sustaining member of the Nine Network at $12 a month because you'll receive two tickets to Donnie Bash and you will also receive the Nine Mug, and that's a handsome mug with the Nine logo on it. You can show off to your friends at work or simply uh, start your own collection at home if you like to show off that you are a Nine Network member. And of course, with either of those memberships, you'll receive Nine Magazine for the full year of your membership, and you will also have Nine Passport, and that will give you extended on-demand access to public television programs that you can watch anywhere you like and any time you like. So give us a call right now. Don't let this chance go by because the folks at Donnybrook are always saying, hey, don't be shy. If you've been before, come on back for another Donny Bash. And if you've never been, you don't know what you're missing. So make sure that you make that call or you can go online. Either call us at 800-568-9099 or at ninenet.org. That's N-I-N-E net.org. And our folks from Donnie Brook are right across the studio. My good friend Will Shaw is with them. Let's join them all right now. Oh, Mary, I'll tell you what, we're just having a grand time. This is, I, I'm, the, I'm hearing the innermost secrets is he? of the Donnie Brook folks. Not all that interesting. Yes, it is. I, Bill talks too fast. Yes. Who'd have thought? Yeah. I do, I do. I mean, I was uh, critiquing myself before we went on it. I do talk too fast. No, I don't think do so not. at all. That is not I don't know great. why you're saying that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't talk enough, and I talk too much, so you can ask the viewer. Well, you see, this is exactly the kind of thing that you will have an opportunity to get in on at the Donny Bash, because you will actually have the opportunity to rub elbows, just like I am, with the Donny Brook folks. Uh, you get some uh, little cheese, little wine, a uh, little uh, uh, backstage uh, intrigue with the folks. Uh, this all happens after the after the before 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 during oh, the during, right. actually during, during. during. wow yeah. that's, I, I think that's Will has to call much. that number I, yeah, I do yeah. well I just yeah. you know I've I've never had the opportunity to be that because the darn thing is always sold out and rightfully so you need so, to join the nine network well I did but I I always get some of the other I get some of the highfalutin stuff you know the news hour. Yeah. Uh, gifts and things like well, that. I, but. And I tell you, you made a good point that you really do get to see kind of the backstage 
as well as the on-stage us because we do have the, you know, before the show we talk and after the show we talk and it's it's cool. It's always a part funny to be part of a show that's live, but other than that, so like, man, these people saw us before the show, they saw us during the show, and they saw us after the show, and it's just like I've covered many sporting events, they're like, man, you see them warming up, you yep. see them do the game, yep. then afterwards, and they're kind of three different people in one. Do you find that they like you better before the show than after the show? Absolutely. I, I, yeah. I find Absolutely. they like us better after they had a couple a drinks. A couple glasses yeah. of wine. Um, but no, they um, it's just great fun for us. And we all, uh, at least in my case, I'd say, get some ideas of what to say in the pre-party the pre, uh, pre show. show and yep. the pre-show and then maybe get some corrections in the post-show. But um, it's great fun for us. It's so, it's really an honor for us to get to meet and talk to the, the Donnie Brook fans and there's so many of them that come year in, year out, which should tell the rest, anybody out there, that it's it's a, it's a great time. And may it's we add, time. with Father's Day, Father's Day, the Ooh. holiest day of the year, just around the corner. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> you know, uh, it, this is a great Father's Day gift because then, Dad has everything. I mean, think about it. it. Your father, how do you shop for Dad? But, but, the, but this the is a way for Dad to join us for Donnie Bash. But the problem is that most fathers are not opinionated oh, when yeah, it comes right. to politics. So they wouldn't be interested <laughs> no. in anything like this. This is just right up dad's alley. Dad doesn't need sure. he doesn't need another tie or aftershave. He would love this to come good, to Donnie Brook and good. tell us why he's right. Could be a belated Mother's Day gift. It could oh, be. Yeah, yeah it that, could. a birthday, it could. wedding gift, right. anniversary yeah. gift. We have a lot of right. we have a lot of viewers who come every year as an anniversary. They will give uh, they give the gift of Donnie Bash mm -hmm. for their anniversary, I've, so that's pretty neat. And I I've got never, a promise, I have a promise for you guys out there. Buy Donnie Bash tickets, okay? And there will be something special there. Charlie will take care of it. <laughs> I will yeah, find yeah, it secondarily. Yeah, yeah. You buy a Donnie Bash ticket, the St. Louis Blues, win the Stanley Cup, the Stanley Cup is gonna be at Donnie Bash, okay? It is. I mean, oh I'll gosh. make that promise to you right you now. How are you going to make that? Uh, <laughs> okay. That's hey, an interesting, interesting hey, well, promise. I'm going to well, do it. There you I'll go. Let's see. Bernie Federko and I will make Bernie it happen. Bernie Federko uh, and we'll Alvin see. are very tight. You Alvin like said kidding? it. I believe it. Uh, <laughs> we need to go back over to Mary and hear all the details about our thank you gifts. I listen, I don't doubt, I, I'm, my money's on Alvin, so that's, yeah, I'm right there with him. And we want you to be there for Donnie Bash. It's a Thursday evening, September 26th, and the doors open at 5.30, and it's at the Sheldon Concert Hall, and everybody knows what a gem of a parking lot that is. Easy in, easy out. Uh, you can be there as soon as the doors open. There are refreshments before the taping ever begins. And one of the things that, that's just amazing is that it's not just the guys from Donny Brook sitting around a table. They literally transform the entire set over to the Sheldon Concert Hall. There are special introductions, and you can be there. There are a couple of ways. First of all, we talk about how the tickets are as a sustainer for five dollars a month you'll receive one ticket or if you would like at five dollars as a sustainer you can also enjoy the nine network mug but we think that the best deal around is when you become a sustaining member of the nine network for twelve dollars a month that gets you two tickets plus that handsome nine network mug and it's so easy to join you call us at the number that you see on your screen, 1-800-568-9099. You can also join us online at 9net.org. That's N-I-N-E-net.org. And the volunteers will have you off the phone in no time. Don't forget that with any of those membership levels, you will receive Nine Magazine for the full year of your membership and also Nine Passport. So call us right now. Um, and thank little... you so much for joining what? us in September. Ray, we were talking just uh, right. before our break there, asking people to join us for Donnie B right. Bash about uh, Joel Courier. You don't think he should have apologized no, or should apologize to anybody? I don't think he should. And we live in a time when the president of the United States calls the, the media the enemy of the people. And the idea that now we're charging reporters with contempt, uh, I think, is, is a bridge too far. I mean, you know, I, I just think that, that he was doing his job. 
I, I just don't think that, that he should have even had to apologize. I don't okay. think he needs right. to sit but, down and but, write, but, I'm sorry, letters. But, I, I don't think he needs to write letters of apology, but I think I, I don't think the judge should either. And, and did you read either the press release that uh, Chrissy Burleson put out or the uh, contempt order of Judge Rabato? Talk about sanctimonious. And, I mean, reporters are always pushy. In 2016, in that same court, supposed to be pushing. Yeah, Tim O'Neill had uh, his fingertip knocked off when, mm, a, mm, when an mm. attorney said, "You're not allowed in this conference room." And Tim said, "I think I am." And the guy said, "You know, I mean, this th th they're going too far." Right. Okay, well, right. to compare okay. this okay. judge okay. Okay. to the Let's president. Go. Then Is with Courier, yeah, I'm saying period. lock him up. Yeah. Lock him oh, up. Yeah. Right. Right. You hey, changed right. my mind. Okay, right. Right. Yeah. let's okay. move on. Ray, I want to ask you about developments in the state of Illinois. Landa Lincoln. Right. Turns out there's going to be sports gaming. Once you cross the border and you see the Welcome to Illinois sign, you'll be able to go on your iPhone or your laptop and you'll be able to bet on games and th this is through Fairmount Park, you know. Uh, you'll be able to bet on Paul Goldschmidt bet on Paul Goldsmith is he going to hit a triple or home run and there's going to be slot machines at the racetrack there'll be six new casinos right. in the state of uh, Illinois including one in Chicago I'm a little dubious if this is the way that uh, Illinois thinks it's going to end its economic problems what do you think well on a night when we're asking everybody to support Donnie Brook uh, to Channel 9, we, we acknowledge a big part of our reader, uh, our viewership is in Illinois. And they've obviously listened to Professor Alvin Reed and taken his advice in Illinois. No, but I, the, it's just one more example of a lot of them in which Illinois, which has its problems, is not allergic to revenues like Missouri is. And, you know, what, and I've been arguing when, the idea of taxing vices that are going to take place in any case is is simply it's a source of revenue for governments and if you want to be like Missouri and be pure and pristine what are you talking and, about we got four casinos on the St. Louis right. side of the river right. and we got the lottery well, how pure can we possibly well, we be? aren't but my point is we're too pure to do this kind of uh, sports, sports revenue gambling. and so the point is there's all kinds of things I've argued about the elder well, well, locally it, and locally it's a great thing for Fairmont yes I mean, I well, mean yeah, there was a good. racetrack that right. was you know staggering toward what seemed to be the finish line and this gives it uh, new life but don't you know it's going to take business away from the casino queen do you that's, think it's really so going to do you think more people are going to be spending money on betting or will they just move I, I their would betting? rather see people spend money on the horse racing than, than on the slot machines well, well people they're putting wait, slot it's machines more fun at the it's something airports. that a family put, can did do did you hear yeah. that they're doing they're, they're they're like trying to do vegas well, that's they're fine. putting fine. slot machines at the airport fine. I well, know. A lot of money is going to be people. Go. at it's airports. Talk, it's people from out of town. That's they, that's. They new already areas. have the lottery. They already have video gaming in just about every bar yeah. on the east side of the river. For you folks to if think that economic it, development is going to result from people it, taking their paychecks hey, and what, betting it, I, the house you wins. Know what, the state's misery, not going to win. If, if Lambert Airport had slot machines in it and people from who are out of town put their money in there and we get a piece of that money from out of towners, that's called net economic gain. Who cares about well, this? I mean, we're and not, we're not like, and you make the point. So we're in the gambling thinking about putting a toll bridge where you don't have to pay to leave, but you got to pay to come in yeah, right. and people be right back in with the money they lost or the money they won paying that toll. What did you go over there for? I went over there A to buy marijuana, which is gonna be legal on January first. I went over there to gamble. Whatever. <laughs> Who cares? What else? They're keeping the money yeah. and it's we're revenue. crying poverty. No, no, I mean yeah, yeah. It's yeah. revenue. Just, just like those you know, we have six casinos in the greater St. Louis area right now. You can't sports gamble they at all, Charlie. They've St. Louis had the gaming. And Alvin, there's no gambling. Had, Nothing but has But Alvin, happened. they've had the gaming. I mean, they, Illinois they, has had the gaming. They did and not, they, they so have, you think that that is the only thing standing between them and rainbows and, and leprechauns yeah. and pots you know, here's of gold. the deal. To bet on a football game, you don't know the millions of dollars that's going to generate from oh, St. Yeah, Louis right. oh, going yeah, Here's, yeah. here's the deal. People that, what, but the point is, and I've made, and again, I always get in trouble. I point out the we we have adult entertainment, but we zone it away so that we don't get the revenues from the spending oh, from right. St. Louis and so on. It's the same principle here. Mm -hmm. People are going to want to go to across the river to bet on football games. If they could bet on them here, Mm -hmm. The revenues would stay in Missouri. Charlie, Nobody's going to bet more I, I, or right. less. Okay, Charlie, we're going to have the revenues. On January 1st, 
when the bowl games are played, probably January right. 2nd, when NFL playoff Lots of games folks are, are going you and I there. are going to drive over there, and we won't be able to get a parking place in some of these places, and no. these people are going to be putting money down. You, they would be you, at you, home you, eating. They, they can be home, and they can bet at home on their iPhones. They don't have to go to Fairmount Park. They'll be there. Yeah, okay. Well, well we heard this Let's before. See. We'll see what happens. Yep, you we'll see will. in 10 years. <laughs> All right. Okay, no, one year. Bill, I want to ask you about uh, Senator Josh Hawley, who, in a recent judicial committee hearing really grilled a lawyer from Michigan who had represented the city of East Lansing, Michigan. And as the attorney, he had pretty much criticized a farmer who was Roman Catholic who refused to rent his property for a gay wedding. And so the city of East Lansing decided that this guy could not sell fruits and vegetables at the local farmer's market. And you know what Josh Hawley said? Um, that lawyer was really cracking down on that farmer's religious liberty. Do you agree? Well, no, no, I, I don't. And I think you could, you could make the argument that, you know, that, that he was. But Josh Hawley was uh, condemning the lawyer for the client he represented, which was the city of East Lansing. And, and that's like saying Scott Rosenblum is pro-murder because he represents murder defendants. I think Josh Hawley's argument was kind of intellectually dishonest. And I say that, of course, I, you know, I'm not a fan of Josh Hawley, so I'm not uh, unbiased in that. Well, and the Wall Street Journal and others have said the same thing. It's a horrible precedent to set for, for conservatives to our, this is a Trump appointee, of course, but it's a horrible precedent to set to hold a judicial nominee responsible for the arguments he's made on behalf of a client as if yeah, those were his opinions. Not, this was not any garden variety argument. If you, uh, if you do compare in any way the Catholic Church to the Ku Klux Klan, that's, they're, they're, I, 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 I wasn't doing that. I don't believe it. I don't think he was doing that. He was using it. He was using it. He was using it as an analogy. He wasn't comparing them. Right. He, was, he wasn't comparing. I just like, look, of course I don't he be civil. Criminal, whatever. And my defense attorney said, like, just whispered in my ear, said, like, hey, dude, we're we're going straight race card here. I'm just, it's just going to be a clown show. And the second they said either you won the suit hmm. or you're not guilty, I'm thinking, like, woo And I'm, I, then he said, like, hey, I'm going to run for federal judge now. And if somebody said, like, you're not fit to be a federal judge because you de defended Alvin with all kind of crazy tactics, I said, like, and, and some other okay. attorneys came up with this? Oh, give me a break, Josh Hawley. That's nonsense. And quite frankly, this is not conservative. This is not liberal. This is just some silliness coming out of Josh Hawley's he's mouth. Just, That's he's that he's just trying to play to the game. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. Ray, I want to ask you about um, a rainbow flag that right. burned in the Grove. The Grove is an area that's really made huge progress the last right. 15 years, with including a lot of homes and businesses run and occupied by our friends who are gay and lesbian and beyond. Right. Okay. In this case, a rainbow flag was stolen and burned, and some people say, hmm, maybe a bigger deal should have been made about this. I bet a lot of our viewers don't even know about this, because maybe with the blues and the floods, said, the issue hasn't been front and center. But I'm saying, you know, we don't know exactly who burned that flag yet. Until we do, we shouldn't jump to conclusions that it's homophobic. I think you can, when a rainbow flag is burned behind a gay bar in the Grove, I think you can jump to the conclusions. And apparently they had stolen, the cops said they stole something from the United Church of Christ and tried to you, you, do yeah, something. You, I think, yes, I think, and, and it comes on the heels and the LGBTQ Q community mm -hmm. is, is, is nervous as the RFT had a good story on because it just, just comes on the heels of an, a, a, a homophobic act of, of, of vandalism or whatever it, in Soulard. And that community, the community has every reason, and, and that the odds of this not being homophobic are but about Ray, one in a million. But Ray, the, 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 we, we, I do agree with Charlie in terms of, you know, we have to wait and not rush to judgment, if you will, because the we have found over time that some of the, uh, I mean, uh, quite a disturbing number of the African-American churches in the South that were burned were burned by African-Americans who were trying to create a certain narrative. If it is found that somebody outside of the, the gay and lesbian community did this, then they should pay whatever penalty has to be paid. I mean, the ultimate penalty, because that is a hate crime and it should be, it should be dealt with I as such. I think people in the community would tell you that they are feel there's ongoing 
you know, negativity. Well, true, but, but, but then again, we, right. you know, right. to right. Wendy's point, yeah. we had the vandalism in the right. Jewish cemetery, and it right. turned out to be That's right. uh, just a drunk. Right. So it's possible. Don't know. It's possible, but I, 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 do, right. I do think, right or wrong, the reaction to such would have been stronger if this had been involved black people, black owned sure. business, a black oh, home. Without, yeah, without and, question. And it might have been turned out it could have been black people that did it. But the initial reaction was one such that I think as a whole was much less stringent. You're right. Anything mm. burning reminds us mm. of yes, Mississippi. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. All right. Mm. Well, no I'll question. tell you what, uh, many more topics to come. But first, we want to invite you to join us for Donnie, Bra uh, Donnie Bash rather in September. See. There is lots more Donnie Brook to come. Uh, stay with us. Don't go away. We're going to take just a few minutes here to cordially invite you to join the Nine Network and support Donnie Brook and all the other programs that you and your family enjoy here on the Nine Network. Join us right now at the $5 sustaining membership level, and we have for you one ticket to the Sheldon on September 26th of this year. And that's for Donnie Bash, and that's when you get to see a live taping of Donnie Brook. Well, is it a taping or is it actually? No, it is a taping. It's a live taping of Donnie Brook, and you get to rub shoulders with the Donnie Brook cast. You will see them before and after the show, a little wine, a little crackers, and uh, a lot of nice chit chat with these folks. Get to meet them, see what great folks they are, and uh, pick up on some of the inside scoop on the news around the St. Louis area. That's yours with just a $5 ongoing monthly contribution to Channel 9. Now, there's a better one, and that is the $12 monthly contribution, and that'll get you two tickets. You can bring along that significant other, and you'll also get the new Nine Mug. Two tickets to Donny Bash plus the Nine Mug when you join us with just a $12 per month ongoing monthly contribution. And there's a look at Donnie Bash right there. You see uh, the audience, you see folks, oh, there, there they are just uh, having a good time with Wendy and she's just as charming as ever. Look at that, what a lovely evening you and your uh, date will have at Donnie Bash. That's coming up September 26th uh, over at the Sheldon. We're going to go over now. The, uh, the cast of Donnie Brook is here, and Mary Ann Carson has completely tamed them. Take a look at this. Wow. <laughs> oh, not hardly. <laughs> not hardly. You know, I always ask you guys, uh, what, what, like, what, what's your favorite part of Donnie Bash? And every time I ask you guys, I always get different answers, which is really fun. What, what's yours? Well, seeing people mm -hmm. uh, for live broadcasts, mm -hmm. which is really rare. We don't have live television broadcasts anywhere anymore. Certainly not in St. Louis. Right. I'm talking about a live broadcast with an audience, mm -hmm. you know, that is so rare. And it's the one aspect of uh, this program that really makes it unique, mm -hmm. this Donnie Bash. Mm -hmm. So you get to meet the people beforehand, mm -hmm. meet the viewers afterward, mm -hmm. and it's a rare treat for us. And Hopefully the viewers enjoy it as well. I think they usually do. And Wendy, what about you? I think that it's it's proof every year that you can, as the world used to be, before we had our silos, that you can disagree with friends yeah. and not be disagreeable. And that's what it, it it's definitely something that the audience also that's a that's a thought that the audience subscribes to as well because they'll come up to us, they'll challenge us, but it's always done in you know a, a, a spirit of camaraderie and you mm -hmm. know we're all in this together and so that's what that's what i love and i also love the fact that it's a great transition into fall it's sort of yes. even though it can be yeah, 100 degrees yes it's still usually just really lovely that it, time it of year. really is well right. for me you know, it's before the show i could be alone with my thoughts because i <laughs> i watch the fans mob wendy and charlie oh, and right. bill and alvin and i'm i'm able to have a nice uh, drink and be alone and relax and it's very i kind of meditate during that period. bill is bill is uh bill is mick jagger ray is no. keith richards no no you, no, you no, get that ray is Mick Jagger. Okay. The Ray you said Jagger. Then you're <laughs> Keith Richards. We're the two old Rolling Stones. Well, you're the Rolling Stones. Which is old, hopelessly old, I think, yeah. is what you're trying to say. <laughs> Last September, I was Jim Morrison because I was late. <laughs> and I walked in, everybody's looking at me like, We've what's been. up, dude? Right? And, I'm like, and I'm like, why are you looking at me like this? Right. But I missed out on a special time backstage because before we do the show, mm -hmm. and that's my well, so many favorite times, but I said, like, look. 
this whole thing where they introduce us, Charlie's last, I'm for him, and like, but you're going out there and say like, look, it's a stage. They're, they call our names. We go out. That's mm -hmm. special because the audience makes it special. It's live. Mm -hmm. There ain't no, I, well, we don't do retakes, but there's no, hey, I didn't do that right, or there's no whatever, like, hey, go do it. And it's so beautiful. And the people get to experience that too. And everybody says like, that show really was live. And you mm -hmm. keep like, as we say, the show's live. And after the show, like, right. that really was live. Like, yeah, yeah. you're yeah, part that's of That's what it. you yeah. tell them. Right. But then when they finally get there and experience mm -hmm. that, and and I love it because uh, this show, the, the audience I know, then really becomes a bigger part of the show because you don't have them oh, here yeah. for these tapings. But there, they I'm sure they let you know what they're thinking. They do. Right. What's your favorite part? Well, what I like is watching the interaction and the way people have changed. We do when there's an audience. Alvin, especially, oh, Alvin is he, Mr. He, he gets on fire. Yeah, I yeah, mean, it's, yeah. You know, I sit next to Alvin every week. We have drinks and everything later. But when there's that live audience, uh -huh. Alvin just becomes <laughs> that high school. Right. Well, it's because he's professionally uh, trained. Broadway yes. star. He was trained. Right. He the was only trained. Thing Nathan missing. Frank. Is Nathan there? Detroit. Right. Nathan the Detroit. only <laughs> thing missing with Alvin, and the audience will understand this when they are there in September the 26th, the only thing missing is like the pinky ring, the tuxedo, and the yeah. rocks glass. We, we can't smoke anymore. Oh, huh? Yeah, because you are all over it. No, you it's everybody. No, it, no, it's everybody on on this panel, and we're on that stage, and we're there for you. <laughs> and look, for two tickets, and for what you pay for it to be the sustaining member, seriously, it's worth it. That one show alone, I will, I'll brag. Yes. I said that one show alone is worth what you get for a year. It really is. And we also question. want to remind folks that that Father's Day is just coming up, which means that, gosh, dad doesn't need another tie, he doesn't need barbecue tools, he needs tickets to Donnie Bash. He That's does. Right. So, yeah. right. so you want to give us a call. Let's go back to Will once again. All right, I, I've got to correct myself. They, they already have, but I want to remind you, this is a live broadcast. I said a live taping, nonsense. No, it's all live. So. You'll get to see whatever they do, it'll be out there for the whole world, and you'll be there watching it as a new member of the Nine Network. Join us right now at the $5 per month sustaining membership level, and you'll get one ticket to see Donnie Bash live and in person on September 26th of this year. That's $60 a year, which also, by the way, gets you Nine Magazine and a membership in Nine Passport, which allows you hundreds of hours of nine network programming that you can watch on your iPad, your iPhone, or your your regular old TV. How about that? Or your computer. That's all yours when you join us at that $5 per month sustaining membership. Now the better deal really is, especially if uh, you can get a date, how about this? Join us at the $12 a month sustaining level and you'll get two tickets to Donnie Bash plus the new nine mug. All of that is yours for just a $12 a month ongoing contribution. And of course, you'll also get the Nine Passport. You'll also get Nine Magazine. And best of all, you'll get an entire year of great programming for you and your family here on the Nine Network. Call us right now. Hey, thanks so much for joining us again, and we'll see you in September. Alvin Reed, I want to ask you because uh, you seem a little concerned. At least you said that you were. Maybe you still are. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> Circus Flora, one of the great cultural institutions in St. Louis, is going to have a grocery store theme this year. And uh, people can come down to Grand Center and see what's called Aisle 6, where the circus is actually going to take place in an area that's set up like a schnooks aisle, which I think is great. How do you feel? Well, you know, I, I feel like I'm, they come to me when I want to hate on St. Louis institutions, but <laughs> no, I don't want to go care about schnooks and circus floor. I want to see the tumbling and the acrobatics and all that, but why I got to be in schnooks? I mean, I want to, I want to be away from my everyday mundane life. I just don't want to be in the schnooks. Well, well Alan, have... you go to circus floor much? I mean, yes, you... I, I've Okay, gone, well, they yeah. always have some kind of a... Uh, contrived plot. So, but it's not in the... So having this, I don't see the yeah, problem. Yeah, I mean, there have been, I mean, some of the exhibits, they're not going to have, like, an express line. I mean, you're not... It, when you say get away from your day-to-day -day life, I don't think you're 
going to be, you know, dealing with people in aprons with a hello, welcome to Schnooks, my name is Susie Q or anything like that. But I can't let we go had, of the fact that I'm supposed to be a Schnooks. I don't want to be but, a Schnooks. But we have, <laughs> but we have, uh, we have some of our leading corporations who in the past have uh, supported or advertised the mm -hmm. exhibitions at the zoo. But they're not, but, but it's oh, not yeah. like, the arch, you, you, you see the little sign the when you go in, but if the sea lions had like Emerson around their neck or whatever. They I basically do. I, I they basically do. Yeah. Yeah. Almost everything has got yeah, every, We're, we're pretty mercenary yeah. right this now. Is, I, 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 don't know, I, don't I don't know if it's a marketing I can't, tie I, I don't know. I would be a little surprised we don't if know. they just... I would be surprised if it wasn't a market. I, Alvin, I, I think you're the kind of person. I, again, I, maybe it'll be, you know, I would be surprised if the rainbow flag behind the gay bar was just an accident. So, but I would be surprised if it wasn't a marketing yeah. thing. And probably a smart one for sure. Because I'm sure Dinkbergs and I some of the others I don't would be share upset. Alvin's particular concern about it. There's there's all mm. kinds of issues with, with circuses. And Dearbergs and I've never have... heard of grocery store tie-ins being one of them, but I guess it could hey, be. Why not? Hey. <laughs> It doesn't okay. bother me. Now, Wendy, since Bill brought some notes, I'm going to do the same. You have oh, yeah. both violated. You have violated so the so Martin so Duhigg rule. Martin is rule. upset. Martin is yeah, very upset. I have in my hand the lineup for uh, Fair St. Louis 2019. And, um, Wendy, one of my favorite segments <laughs> ever on KMWX Radio was when you and Bill Wilkerson, the late, great Bill Wilkerson, would read the name of rock bands performing in St. Louis. From the Riverfront Times. Yeah. 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 And uh, it was always time. fun. Well, I don't know any of these bands that are performing. They are Brett Young, Randy Hauser, Keith Sweat, Johnny Gill, The Flaming Lips, and Vertical Horizon. How's that for a lineup this year? Johnny Gill is the only, this is how completely ready I am for the pastures in the sky. I, Johnny Gill is the only name I recognize. Well, and I can tell you that. I think burning lips uh, right. or flaming uh, <laughs> lips or. <laughs> Keith, Keith Sweat. Please, let's try to be adults. Right. Keith Sweat was yeah. at his highest rate of popularity when I was in East, Sa East Lansing, working at the Lansing oh. State Journal where this judge is from. He wasn't that popular when he was popular. Wow. You can't do any better I guess, than this. You know, I, I think I was right. You yeah. know, the thing is, the VP yeah. Fair which was or Fair St. Louis, whatever it's called, has gone through cycles. Because I remember in the, in the very early days, and I can't remember specifics, but it was major league talent at the Elton John level or whatever. I mean, major yeah. league folks. And then they went through this thing where they had to be family friendly. And so they had to like kind of, they got away from the major league acts when they first started. I think To where they kind of sanitized it. And now I have to say, maybe it's just I'm not hip because I don't know those groups. But one would think if they were trying to bring it back downtown and make it this big deal, that they would have some major names in it. I think, I think family, some family, some that might family not be friendly, family friendly in my mind was probably a way to economize because the less family friendly you are if you have an Elton John or if you have a... You got to pay. You had to pay, right. Well, let me ask you this. Is there any possibility that this is the wrong panel to judge the lineup? It's now, possible. maybe yes, I should have run absolutely. this by my and daughter well, if or you your possibly, daughter. If you yeah. asked me, I'd have said Flaming Lips and Vertical Horizon are two of my favorite groups. <laughs> you are, then you would be would have, lying. Hey, you, no, I'm saying... Sarah Fensky would know. Why, why not? Sarah Fensky oh. would know. That's fair, but, but, oh. but I think why not... Why aren't we having like Lady Gaga? I mean, you know, that's what I'm because saying. Because I mean, we, we, we would have to mortgage well, the I arch don't to do it. <laughs> I'm just saying okay. I, I would like to have big well, names. Well, we haven't done anything well musically since. Remember when the alderman and, and the former mayor oh, made yeah. that deal with the company from LA that right. they yes. were going to put on a huge yes. concert every year and we were going to get <laughs> some really big time. We're, 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 we're working out. Well, we we're shut down. We better. shut down every other yeah, every yes. other, every other festival right. in the city right. was banned basically. Right. But while we we're, waited for these. <laughs> we're working our way back up to raucous Des Moines, as Senator well, Eagleton guys, said. Last week for the uh, NHL uh, Stanley Cup here, uh, games three and four. Game three included Echo Smith, and then I think it was Gary Clark Jr. for Gary four uh, for game four outside. Those are pretty good they names. Were, and, for I, free they were and I think they were probably um, National Hockey League probably paid for that. Oh, mm -hmm. I yeah, see. Yeah, that was part okay. of the show. I, I guarantee mm -hmm. you. Speaking of pay, Bill, um, the St. Louis County Council is trying to increase the pay for women in the county, and they made an announcement this week that heretofore, people applying for jobs with the county won't be asked about how much money they're making currently or their pay history. And this is seen as a way for people applying for government work not to 
tell others what they're making so they'll be lowball when it comes to the offer. I'm thinking to myself, why don't you just pay people more as opposed to asking them what they make, you know, just raise the salaries. I don't think this is going to make much of a difference. What do you think? I think it'll make a little bit of a difference in a good way. I mean, uh, most people are like me. If some company were to ask me back when I was working full time, you know, what are you making? I would have told them the truth. And I know that sophisticated people say, no, you always give a higher figure. But, but I wouldn't have known that. And I'm sure most people apl uh, applying for jobs who aren't sophisticated would give an honest number. I think this is a good thing. I think Bill's right, and also a lot of employers will be influenced. I mean, if you have, if That's somebody I mean. if, if somebody you, tells you you have a position open, and the number that they have been working at is substantially lower than what you were going to pay, there's nothing that keeps an employer and in this kind of government from. From lowering that, so I think it would. Whether it's going to be an overnight thing, and exactly well, I, I, I love, I love Sam you, Pages. You it's know, fine. he said, "Hey, right. it's going to cost us." That's that's a little dose of. I mean, it's a it's it's the most um, understated <laughs> reality out there. The fact that women are still getting paid less for doing the same job in 2019 right. is really unbelievable. Well, I mean, there's, it's true. there's a whole ladder there, and white men are at the top, and everybody else is falling in. And besides, there's going to be lots Why of extra. Why are you always picking there's, on us? There's going to be a lot of extra money floating around the county now that we've taken care of certain individuals. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> I mean, there's probably a reason why women are making less. and they, Yeah, because they, uh, these, discrimination. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we don't pay nurses Wendy. as much as we pay firefighters. Yeah, discrimination. Or, Actually, right. firefighters is not a good example because yeah. that's run by the fire protection districts. Yeah. But the police officers, if more women became police officers, they would get exactly the same pay as the men. Because well, that's why that's teachers scale. don't make much, Charlie, because traditionally that's been They're a women. women's job. Right. And, and like this, Galvin said, well, actually, I think, I think in Missouri the teachers are getting so they're way are, decent. Men are that's, they do, and yeah. they have a great retirement, but that's what we're talking about. So, little, 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 well, little. Charlie, I don't, I don't think Bill said it's, is, it's, it's kind of sophisticated to know to go into a job no, interview that is and say, what is the hey, to not give your correct salary. I think Everyone should know. If you don't, when you're applying for a job, I didn't know. No, I most people known. don't know that. Oh come on! Charlie, now, you, no, now, Charlie, last week, Uncle Bubba no, would have known. Last, no. last week, Charlie, I smacked all, the I you. You, You're doing I, that right now. I get it. All Alvin and I are going to take care of the three yeah. white guys. Yeah. Are you on telling me you didn't know that? You are a very savvy guy. No, you know but that. here's the but, thing. When I was going in there, in my mind. You, not that no. I'm just happy to have a job, but I ain't hassling nobody over no salary. Charlie, Alvin, right. you're going to be busy. I, 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 I have never asked somebody okay. what's that, the pay. Here's what the they deal. Were, making. Well, we're out of time, a, but we did have some letters we need to read from the viewers who enjoyed or at least watched last week's show. I'm wondering if there's a concern from anyone else but me about the end of our national anthem and people singing and the home of the blues versus and the home of the brave. I don't know how this started, but I think it's disrespectful to our national anthem. That from Patty Pullman of St. Louis. Michael Zerzinski wrote, If Charlie has a problem watching the NHL Stanley Cup Final because there is some heavy hitting, perhaps he should find something else more to his liking. Ballet, opera, chess, puppy dogs, rainbows. Thank you, Michael. We also heard from Esther Phillip. I can't believe it. This is the first time I've agreed with Ray Hartman at all on two topics. Either Ray is changing or I'm succumbing to the years. Esther lives in Imperial. You can write us, care of KETC, 3655 Olive Street, 63108. We love your emails, letters at KETC.org, and your tweets. And you can listen to us on a podcast at Apple, Spotify, Google Play, and tune in. That's this week's program. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good evening. Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. This is your last chance to get your tickets for Donnie Bash coming up September 26th at the Sheldon. And you'll see all of the Donnie 
Donnybrook uh, cast. They'll be there. You'll get to watch a live uh, version of the show. You will be there, uh, get to rub uh, shoulders with the Donnybrook folks before and after the live broadcast. It's, it's just a fabulous night and you'll enjoy it and you can be there when you join the Nine Network at just the $5 ongoing monthly contribution level here at the Nine Network. There you go, we'll send you one ticket to Donnie Bash when you join us at the $5 level, but I suggest if you can get a date that you join us at the $12 level, that way you'll get two tickets to Donnie Bash and you'll also get that new Nine mug. All of that yours with just a $12 ongoing monthly contribution to the Nine Network. And you'll be supporting programs like Donnybrook and all the other programs that you and your children and grandchildren enjoy here on the Nine Network. There's some, there's some tape of, uh, of another Donny Bash. It all happens over at the Sheldon. You can see it's always a packed house and it's a live broadcast. So it'll actually be going over the air as you're watching it. And you can talk to the Donnybrook folks before and after the show when things uh, happen during the live broadcast, as they always do. You can ask them about that. What were you thinking? What was going on in your mind when whatever happens, happens? It's a fabulous night. You will enjoy it. You'll never forget it. And it's all yours with a membership to the Nine Network. Give us a call right now. We'll tell you how to get one ticket or two tickets and it's very easy and very quick. Speaking of quick and easy, let's uh, just go right over to Marianne Carson, and she's with the Donnybrook folks. <laughs> Thank you, Will. <laughs> oh, I know what I was about to say. <laughs> and you all are being so quiet. Oh my gosh, it's so good. You know, we talk a lot about the programs here on the Nine Network, and I don't get a chance to ask you all, like, what are your favorite programs? You know, oh my God! Mm -hmm. I'll take the News Hour. Okay. The News Hour. Yes. We always watch the News Hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is the most balanced. I they think took it. program. Okay, you got it. Yeah. Sorry. Forever. Um, Victoria. Mm-hmm. Um, like I mean, I, I'm I'm so delirious. I keep watching the trailer for Downton Abbey, even though I know it hasn't been on the air oh, for years. That it's a nine a masterpiece. Yes. So I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, that is. And well, let, let before Allie <laughs> grabs the other one I can think of. <laughs> but let me say, I like Nova. Oh, yes. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Mm -hmm. I like Midsummer Murders. I hope they. Oh. I don't know if they're done yet. They yeah. they may have stopped that, but I, I hope it comes back. Uh, Murder in Paradise is good. And of course, Doc Martin. Let Doc me. Martin. Yeah. Oh, everybody. And, everybody. And, and, yeah. and because um, during some of us, Murder in Paradise comes on after uh, yeah. we're on, and I'm actually really trying to get there. And so like, you know, hey, Carmen, tape it if I'm not going to be there. You know, because right. I like. You know, it's it's just a cute show and it's very entertaining. We binge Frontline. I, which tells you how exciting Boy, our life you. is. And I right. actually really yeah. enjoy your turn, We've, if I'm not on it. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but only if I'm not on it. Only and, and if you know, like, last week was one of those weeks, like, boy, I bet you your turn was good. I'm glad I'm driving home right now. <laughs> and, it's, and it's fun. I just like to watch yeah. them yeah. squirm. Yeah. Oh, it's just I, so I sort love of it. And just exactly. as you all had different answers, right. when you meet people who watch the Nine Network and our members, they also, everybody's got their favorite yeah. show. That's I remember true. when someone said, I couldn't believe the, the, the series, whether it was on Nova or Nature, I can't remember where they had the cameras on the animals and they watched like behavior of the animals like in their own groups and everything. And somebody said, who thought of that? That was like, that was, we that do was that the original that concept. Their, we do that, that was actually animals. the concept of yeah. Donnie. Yeah, yeah, we actually do that really? animals yeah, behaving Bill sits in, in a tree. It's <laughs> just, and as a grandfather, I should also throw in Sesame Street. Yeah, oh yeah. sure, oh yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh well, yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons why. We, and whenever we talk to musicians who might be doing a guest appearance with us, they all grew up on Sesame Street, and then they go, "Well, now I have kids who mm -hmm. grow up on it," and that's why they create some of the concerts that our members can go to and those exclusive opportunities because sure. they want to give back. And it's like, you know, it just doesn't get any better than that. I think mm -hmm. people have. I think people have come to appreciate. I mean, people have always appreciated PBS, but especially lately where you know that it's not it's not going to be noise you know the the programming is is meaningful it's almost like you you could imagine the meeting that was going on when they decided to put each and every program where it is mm -hmm. uh, but there's something for everyone in the family every 
you know, set of eyes and ears is valued, and uh, I, I just think it's it's marvelous. But I mean, St. Louis really gets behind and supports well, I was just gonna the say, Nine say, Network. Mm -hmm. One of the things about St. Louis that's really underrated is, and, and the folks here at the station say it, we are really among the very top PBS stations in the country, which actually says something about us. I mean, it says something as a community, mm -hmm. both in in you know mm -hmm. Nine, I think provides great service to St. Louis. But St. Louis really supports Nine at a level mm -hmm. that really is un is it's uncommon. It's un yeah, I mean, and, it's and I think that's a really it's a great thing. It yeah. says something. That's great because you think that, that New York or Chicago would have no. more viewers nope. per capita. Right but here, it's not true. It's right here. Right here. Right here in our town, in River City. In River City. <laughs> we might not have hot water. No. <laughs> well, there's that. Time but time. we do have right. that. <laughs> Let's but we go have back electricity. Right. TVs are yeah. working most of the time. <laughs> and I'll tell you what. I think Donnie Brook is one of the reasons that the Nine Network is one of the most watched per capita. Uh, uh, PBS stations in the country, programs like Donnybrook, and so much more that you enjoy here. 33 years, that's how long Donnybrook has been on the air. Have you been here the whole time? A lot of people have, and they've watched uh, the, the folks, uh, well, Bill get a little gray there in his mustache and, and so on. But uh, we are so happy and so grateful that you've been here all that time, and we hope that you will support it with your membership dollars. Join. The Nine Network tonight at just the $5 monthly ongoing contribution. We'll send you a ticket to see Donny Bash live and in person September 26th at the Sheldon. All of the Donny Brook folks will be there. You'll get to meet them before and after the live broadcast of Donny Brook. It'll be a night you'll never forget. Just a delightful evening. That's yours with just a $5 monthly ongoing contribution to the Nine Network. Join us at the $12 level. We'll have two tickets. You can bring along the old man or, her, you know, it's Father's Day coming up. So what the heck, take him out, get him out of the house and come to uh, Donnie Bash on September 26th at the Sheldon. You'll get two tickets to Donnie Bash plus that new Nine mug. And you can see it there. All of that with just a $12 per month ongoing contribution to the Nine Network. So please, Support Donnybrook, support all of the programs that you and your family enjoy here. Call us right now.